Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to cover the paragraphic equalizer module in Ozone. Now the paragraphic equalizer is really a parametric equalizer, much as you've probably experienced in your digital audio workstation. If you look at the screen, we've got up to eight different bands of parametric EQ, and you can graphically manipulate this. This isn't that unusual, I think, for modern software. You can also change the Q value or the bandwidth of each node by manipulating these handles. And you get on-screen indications of the values as you move these around. So you can do subtle or dramatic boosts. You can do shallow moves, or you can do very tight peaks in these moves. This sort of thing is useful as you're trying to narrow in on frequency bands. Another interesting thing is with a keyboard shortcut, by holding down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, if you click on a node, it will actually solo that node out, as you can see. I'm going to play it back a little bit of the Cavalier King track. That gives you an idea of how that works when you solo those out. You can also click on one and then hold down Command if you're on a Mac or Control on a PC. And now I've selected two and I can then move two of these nodes together. And that's pretty much how the user interface works for the paragraphic equalizer for the parametric part of it. We have a nice reference here for the frequency and you can see on screen that you can also see the dB and the hertz or the frequency wherever you're pointing the mouse that sort of follows you around. Now to get into more details about this parametric equalizer we can hit show info and that brings up a full list of parameters. From here for each node as they're numbered here one through eight I can enable or disable these different bands and I can also choose the shape of the filter. You can see that currently for number one we've got a high pass filter and on number eight we've got a low shelf filter. These would be pretty typical settings but let's just take a look here. We've also got a high shelf filter, a low pass filter, a high pass filter, and a bell. So typically in the middle you'd use these bells and on the low end you use a high pass and on the high end you use either a low shelf or a low pass filter. So I'm going to leave it set like this. Now also within here we have the frequency, the dB of boost or cut and the Q setting. You can also drag up and down here or you can, as I showed before, drag these handles to set the frequency response. Now this filter sounds really good but it's actually got two completely different settings as you'll see here. Here we've got a linear phase filter. So as you manipulate it, it's very accurate and very transparent in what it does. It doesn't do things like vintage outboard gear would do because it doesn't mess with the phasing. There isn't overshoot on the filters like you would typically see, say, on a high pass filter. So I'm going to show you about that with this setting right here. But first of all, I do want to mention snapshots. Snapshots allow you to take snapshots of the frequency spectrum range. As I play back, you'll see that frequency spectrum superimposed over the parametric equalizer and that is why it's called a paragraphic equalizer because we've got that graphic view. I want to point out that snapshots is open and closed by clicking on this button. So if you wind up with this screen here stuck open you just click it again and that will go away. We're going to cover snapshots and frequency matching in a separate video because it's a topic that's worthy of its own video. But now moving along here, this is the setting that sets the characteristic of this filter. So it's almost like two completely different sets of filters. We've got the digital one, the matching one, which we'll cover in the other video, and analog. So even though ozone doesn't look like vintage gear, when you kick in the analog mode, it does give you a lot of the characteristics of tube-based equalizers. And you'll see right here, Immediately, as soon as I kick that in, as I tweak this cutoff frequency of a high pass filter, you can see that we get overshoot that gives you a resonant peak. And that sort of thing happens. You can also see it actually cutting the highs 
there's a resonant peak where it's actually boosting the highs above that point. If we're in the digital version of this filter, it doesn't do that at all. So if you want to get some of that analog character, then you can click in this. And this button is the zoom. This zooms in the magnification, as you can see, around the main area of the screen that you need for setting your frequency response. You can go backwards through these settings by using the control key as you click back. And I believe that works the same on Mac and PC. Now moving along to the stereo button here, I'm gonna just hide this. These are the mid-side controls. And in this video series, this is the first time we've encountered the mid-side controls. If we are in stereo mode, then this applies to the center phantom image as well as what's on the stereo spectrum on each channel. If we go into this mid-side mode, we can now manipulate the frequency response of the middle part of the signal separately from the sides. So the best thing to do is just to demonstrate this. I'm also going to point out that this is a bypass and a solo for the mid-band. And so I'm going to play back a little bit more of Cavalier King, and I'll just do a few frequency response manipulations here. So you can kind of hear what it sounds like when we're working on only in the mid mid band. Now this bypass bypasses the effect, but solo actually will solo the mid band of the frequencies. This is extremely, extremely helpful. Let's do an example now where we activate the side band. This is the curve we currently have for the side band. So one of the things about working with the mid-band and the side-band, on the mid-band we can work on the bass and on the lead vocal or lead instrument to bring it forward in the mix if necessary, and we can isolate it by moving around with these bands to really find you know, where the key frequencies are that we want to work with. Now with the side-band we can take things that are in the stereo image and maybe brighten it up slightly or find key frequencies for instruments to help improve stereo imaging. Of course, normally in mastering we use these things pretty subtly, but this is fantastic tools and these are things that previously were not available in the box or on the desktop type of mastering. Now a couple of other things we can use to work with mid and side one, we can couple them together with this button here. That will link the mid and side together, so manipulations will now affect both. The other thing is you can copy your setting from one. So say you had the mid band set up perfectly, you want to apply it to the side band. If you right click here, you can now copy to side channel. So if I click that now, I've kind of reset them both to the same position, and now I can manipulate that from here. So I think that you will find as you work with this, this is almost amazing tools that we've got to work with that give us capabilities we just didn't have before in mastering tools. And that's a new and a fantastic feature of Ozone 4. So with that, we've covered the paragraphic equalizer. We didn't cover the spectrum display very much in this video, but when we go into the snapshots, in the next video and also frequency matching, which is an exciting feature, we'll cover it at that point. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.